Welcome back. A Bronx creative is redefining what it means to follow your purpose. Wilfred LaSalle, an American actor, film director, producer, and screenwriter, launched his cinematic career as the founder of LaSalle Productions. Today, he joins me to talk about his experience in the film industry and how he incorporates the essence of the Bronx into his storytelling. Wilfred, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Now, what inspired you to take on the journey that is filmmaking? I hear from a lot of people, it's, you know, it's very intense, um, but it's a dream for so many. So, you know, what inspired you to kind of follow that dream? So from a very young age, I was always captivated by the essence of filmmaking. Uh, I remember as a kid uh, sitting in front of a TV, just watching movie after movie for hours and hours. So fast forward to October 2019, I'm working out in the gym and I'm listening to music. And all of a sudden, I start having this vision of all of these images of, you know, just started coming to me naturally. So I left the gym, didn't finish my workout. I went home and I wrote the script for what would become my first short film called Hilo. And uh, hired a production company. I had no film experience whatsoever. Never went to any of these fancy film schools. And uh, we went out to Shelton, Connecticut. Uh, we filmed it. And the rest is history. Now, I think it's so important that you mentioned that you didn't go to film school because I think that can sometimes either one intimidate people, um, but they may feel like it's also too late. So can you just talk about, you know, how you defied convention by launching your career, you know, in your 30s? And as you mentioned, not even having uh, this formal, you know, education that I think that a lot of people feel that they need to follow this dream. Right. So. In society, there's this societal notion that you need to have certain things to do certain things. Uh, here at LaSalle Productions, uh, we had limited resources, up to no resources, no budget. Uh, and I just had this mindset that if I had the courage to start and my back was up against the wall, then I would have no choice to continue. So I think that's really, really important. Uh, you don't need any of those things. You don't need a fancy film school. Uh, all you need is the will and the determination to begin and the vision. And once you have that, persistence will continue to personify what you need to do in order to catapult yourself into where you need to be. Now, you mentioned LaSalle Productions. Can you talk a little bit more about the creation of that? And, you know, what are the type of stories uh, LaSalle Productions explores? So LaSalle Productions is an innovative uh, film company. Uh, we are revolutionizing independent filmmaking one film at a time. Uh, I created this production company to allow actors and actresses from all, all, all walks of life to showcase their talents. Uh, it's an opportunity for them to be in front of a camera. Uh, say they're working on like a big production and they're not seen because they're doing background work. Well, my company allows them to come in and we have a camera, we give them a principal role and they're allowed to showcase their talents on my production. Now, once that happens, uh, we are we put the films on Amazon Prime, they're given their reels, and then they're able to shop for agents, creating other and bigger opportunities for them. No, I think that's so amazing. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I didn't know that, you know, not only were you, you know, in ways helping yourself and kind of following this dream, but you're helping smaller actors um, and actresses. And I want to talk about, you said that they're from all walks of life, which I think it's a great opportunity to talk about the Bronx and, you know, how sometimes people from the Bronx aren't always represented um, in the mainstream, you know, films and TV that we watch. So can you just talk about, like, how your organization kind of, you know, notices that and paves a way for a lot of these Bronx creatives to kind of thrive? So when you come from the Bronx, like you said, uh, there are a lot of negative perceptions associated with the Bronx. But I'm hoping to change that. Uh, about 60 to 70 percent of my films are filmed in the Bronx uh, by Bronx actors and actresses. So we use iconic uh, locations. We shot in Bronx High School of Science outside of there. We've shot on the Cross Bronx Expressway. Uh, I think that that's very important. I think to kind of change the negative stigma, you know. So I'm hoping that my company can do that and show people the good side of the Bronx and what can come out of it in a positive way. And I, I want to expand on that a little bit more because, as I mentioned on this show, we talk about the Bronx a lot, and there's there's always so many obstacles. And I could imagine that there are maybe some challenges being a Bronx independent, you know, film creator, which we will talk about. But what are some of the benefits of being a Bronx creator and working in this borough? There's so many advantages, I got to tell you. So there's a certain grit and a certain realness to people who come from the Bronx, you know. 
And I think that only they can have those experiences coming from the Bronx. Uh, and it's, it's something that's uh, embedded in my stories. I use uh, my experiences to help uh, translate into my films. So whether they're good, bad, no matter what they are, the Bronx has helped me use those uh, experiences to help create my films. Now, do you think the Bronx is represented in the world of film? I know we talked about actors and actresses, but even maybe like just uh, the setting of a movie, you know, do you think uh, the Bronx is represented in film or, you know, do you feel that we're a little bit more underrepresented? I think we are very un underrepresented. I'll tell you this, uh, uh, especially within the Latino community. You know, I'm, I'm Latino and uh, I think that we're, we're really not. You know, I think that we need more uh, diverse portrayals of Latino actors and actresses. And I'm hoping to change that. I'm hoping that when people see my films, they say, oh, wow, you know, that's, that's awesome. He's incorporating this, so he has that. And uh, so to answer your question, no, I don't think it is. Uh, and again, I'm hoping that that does change because there are so many talented uh, Latino actors and actresses and the Bronx is full of so much culture and diversity. So that's number one and that's key. Right. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about you. Uh, you take on many roles in the world of film. So how do you balance taking on the role of a director, actor, screenwriter, and so much more? Um, and how do these different roles kind of impact, you know, what we see on the screen? I can tell you that it's very stressful. But uh, what helps me is uh, you have to be a good problem solver. I think that is key. Uh, in this industry and what helps alleviate a lot of the stress in taking on those roles is being able to delegate uh, specific tasks to cast members while I'm on set. And that really helps take a lot of the pressure off of me. Uh, say a cast member isn't in the scene. So we'll have one of my cast members come in, he'll hold the boom mic, I'll have another guy do script supervisor. Those small things are huge when it comes to taking on all of these roles because it, it, can, be, it can be a lot, it really can. Now, I, I, I love that what you just mentioned that they could take on another role, which is an educational opportunity. Can you talk about how this can provide educational opportunities for those who may be new or maybe they don't know if they want to be an actor or a director or a screenwriter? You know, how does that help them? A lot of these uh, younger or at any age, you know, people who just kind of want to get into the film industry, but they're not really sure what role they want to take on. So a lot of people have this thing where they think they need experience. Again, you don't need the experience, but... Uh, I think that when you give someone a role like script supervisor or something like that and you explain to them, hey, listen, this is what you'll be doing, I think it causes uh, a level of inspiration because if you take someone out their comfort zone, they're kind of forced to either grow to a level where uh, it's, it's complex because if you have an actor who is, isn't, he isn't in the role of in the scene, and then he comes on and he's like, you know, this is something different than what I'm used to. It may give him a different perspective and say, you know what, I never thought about being a script supervisor or, but this is cool, you know? And it gives them another opportunity to say, all right, you know, not only am I an actor now, I can add this to my reel, my resume. So I think that can also create a different level of educational opportunity for them besides acting. Now, can you talk uh, about your latest project, Oculus? Uh, you know, what is that about? And you know, how did that kind of come to life? Oculus is my first sci-fi action horror film. Uh, it introduces a character by the name of Zia Laney, who's played by the very talented Tara Beavers, who's one of my actresses from PA, who drives four and a half hours for each shoot. Uh, so Zia Laney ends up losing her son tragically in the film. And Zia ends up dying in the film, and she enters what's called the Oculus, which is like an afterlife purgatory. There she becomes the leader of the suits, and from there it just takes off. I can't give too much away. Right, we don't want to spoil, spoil anything. Yeah. Uh, we definitely want <laughs> people to kind of learn a little bit more about that. Now, you know, after this experience and kind of, you said it started kind of like in 2019, you know, what have you learned about yourself on this journey and what you want to continue doing in the world of filmmaking? I want to inspire people. I want people to say, you know what, I saw that guy, uh, Wilfred LaSalle, and he inspired me. He, he started from nothing. And I hope that people can see my films and say, wow, this guy, what he's doing is pretty innovative. Uh, I always say to people that we're revolutionizing independent filmmaking one film at a time. And what that means is there are a lot of talented independent filmmakers, 
But what LaSalle Productions does, we step outside the box. We take massive risks. We're not shooting a film in a park or in a home. We're shooting on the Cross Bronx Expressway. We're shooting in front of Bronx High School of Science with no permits. It's pretty innovative and it's risk taking. But I want them to say that guy's daring. He has an edge to him and he had a big influence. And he, if he did it, I can do it. And I always live by this quote that goes, uh, in order for a man to know where he's going, he must first know where he has been. That quote has stuck with me for a very long time, and it continues to stick with me. Now, can you quickly just let us know, I think what you said about independent filmmakers is so important. Do you think now, um, as a society, especially in the film industry, there are more open to independent filmmakers, um, and there's like a higher chance of you know, being successful and kind of going on to bigger things? Absolutely, after the SAG strike, I don't know if you're familiar with the SAG strike, that pretty much opened up the, the, the floodgates for independent filmmaking. I remember they were working without contracts, and I think that was a big opportunity, especially for my company, to be on the forefront of it and reap the benefit of it. Uh, I think people now are more susceptible and more accepting to independent filmmaking, especially now like with platforms like Amazon Prime and Tubi now allowing independent filmmakers to place their films on their websites and on their platform. So I definitely think there is uh, a great opportunity for independent filmmaking. And I also agree, I think this is an exciting time to kind of, you know, take advantage of, you know, the internet and social media and, you know, how you can kind of get your, your work out there. Can you quickly just let people know how they can watch and support your work? So my, uh, you can go to my website at lasalleproductions.com or if you're interested in checking out any of my films, uh, Graves is available on Tubi. Uh, we're available on Amazon Prime. Oculus will be available on Amazon Prime in April of 2024, and then months after, it should be available on Tubi and Peacock and other streaming platforms. Well, Winfred, I want to thank you so much for joining us. This was a really fun conversation, and I always enjoy talking to Bronx creatives, so thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you for us. having me. To keep up with all of the work Wilfred Productions, um, or to learn more about his company, please go to his website at www.lasalleproductions.com. We've come to the end of our show today. I'd like to thank all of our guests for joining us and you, the viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of today's show, you can catch the Recable, the Recable cast on Optimum Channel 67 and Verizon Fios Channel 2133 or watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. You can catch a brand new episode of Open with Darren Jaime on Wednesday and with Rena Valentine on Friday. I'm Kevin Aline, wishing you your safety and wellness now and always. See you next time.